Hi everyone, this is Kalpana Pandit from the lovely city of Tucson, Arizona. And today I begin to fulfill one of my greatest dreams of wanting to interview centenarians of this world. My very first wonderful centenarian is Carmen Samarano. She has graciously agreed with her beautiful family to talk to me about the secrets of her long and healthy life. And uh, she was born on February 10th, 1915 in Fort Lowell, Arizona. And she has led a very long and fruitful life. She is the mother of six children and a grandmother and a great grandmother and a great great grandmother to many. And I'm so proud to be here today. Thank you for having me and I look forward to talking to you. Thank you for coming to my house. <laughs> my pleasure. Carmen, my first question to you, what do you think is the secret of your extremely healthy and long life? Well, the thing is, uh, I think, is because we always used to work and play. Not, and. Uh, we did not sit around watching TV because there was no TV, <laughs> or not even radios, as far as I can remember. Oh. And uh, this, and uh, we always stayed home with our parents. We didn't go out much or, or anything like that, you know. So, uh, were you outdoors a lot? Did you play outdoors a lot? And you think? Fresh air made a difference? Well, we work a lot and we played a also outside. As you all know, I think food is one of the most important ingredients, whether you choose healthy or unhealthy for a long and happy life. I would love to know the secret of Carmen Samarano's good health and her eating habits. So I am trying to ask her what she thinks is her favorite foods through the decades. I like uh, tacos. Mm-hmm. I love tacos too. Yeah, and, and uh, what about tamales? <laughs> so I like spicy. Do you like spicy food? No. No. Ah, I'm a sp you know, I'm from India, so I love spicy food, and I love spicy Hispanic food. But tamales are my favorite. Okay, so you like tamales, you like tacos. What else? Uh, what else have you? Well, with beans. I mean, we, we when we were young, we ate a lot of beans and tortillas, mm -hmm. vegetables too. Because mm -hmm. my father, my father was a farmer, and he planted all kinds mm -hmm. of things. They bought trucks full of vegetables and everything downtown mm -hmm. from Fort Lowell. Oh wow! And then we ate pretty good at that uh -huh. too. Uh -huh. A lot of different vegetables. So pretty much you ate what you wanted. You never really um, dieted or deprived yourself of any food, right? Yeah. But you were always active from what I can gather. You were always very active and outdoorsy and worked. You said you worked on the farm? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So Carmen, I see that you're still very active. Do you still drive? Huh? Do you still drive? No, because I don't have a car. <laughs> mm. I, mm -hmm. But I heard you say... I, but I decided I would buy a motorcycle. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the spirit. That should be the spirit. I love but that spirit. Of course, I was kidding. I know, I know you were kidding, but I think it's wonderful that you're so active and independent. But, uh, I and did drive a bicycle when I was from Somalia. Oh, you did? You, uh, so that was one a, form of exercise. And a horse. <laughs> wow, my you were a horse rider? Horse. Yeah. My grandfather had a horse. Oh, and wow. I used to drive one of oh, wow. our errands. Yeah. Not for fun. <laughs> wow. So having met Carmen Samorano, I'm completely happy and awestruck <laughs> by her wonderful spirit. Uh, by her exuberant spirit and uh, her affection for life and family and uh, I would love for her to tell us what advice would you give Carmen to the young people of today to lead a long and fruitful and happy life? Well, to be respectful to people, to, to everybody and, uh, and try to, to be friendly and all that. 
he that have had a good advertise, if you have had to. Sorry? Give good advice if you've had to. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. So, um, Carmen says to be respectful to people and be friendly. And I think that's worked for her wonderfully. And I think that's great advice. So, next, I'm very excited to have um, the family of Carmen Samarano with us. And I shall be talking with them in a moment. And I'm back everybody and this time I'm so proud to be sitting here in the Samarano family residence after interviewing centenarian Carmen Samarano and here is her family um, her son Samuel Samarano her daughter-in-law Ruby Samarano and her granddaughter Priscilla Samarano first of all thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for letting this happen in your lovely residence and uh, it just having the entire three generations on one couch to me fills my heart with happiness because it it brings out the power of family the power of love and uh, I'm just honored to be here so thank you very much and I'd love for all of you to say hello to our audiences and uh, Mr. Samuel Samarano if you would like to say a few words I'd be very happy yes hello I'm Samuel I'm Carmen's uh, youngest son that was born right here in this house uh, wow. in the room next door here 65 years ago and uh, I'm proud uh, to call my mom mom she, she's always been uh, a, a lady that's been uh, very respectful here in the neighborhood and uh, she's always uh, been a Christian lady she has never drank or smoked in all her life and She's always been de a dedicated Christian lady, helping uh, whoever comes along and helping everybody in the neighborhood. She went to school and studied to be a nurse, but she never did become a nurse. She became a homemaker, but everybody would bring their kids over when they needed some some kind of treatment. My, my mom would treat her. She, mm -hmm. she would also take care of all the elderly uh, neighbors that, would, that lived here around the neighborhood. And I believe that that's a promise in the Bible also that she she took care of her mother-in-laws and, and her grandchildren and, 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 took, and took care of her mother-in-law and her father-in-laws and uh, she's always been the pillar of the Samarano family oh, that is and uh, we all love her mm -hmm. and and uh, we, we just are so proud and blessed to still have her with us. Oh, thank you. That's very, very touching and heartwarming. And uh, it, it just goes to show the power of being a strong and helpful citizen of society, of having faith, of uh, being respectful, is the secret of a long and wonderful life and a close and happy family life, as is very obvious. So thank you, Mr. Samarano, for saying that. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, Ruby, would you like to say anything to our audiences? So we are very happy that you're here with us. Yes. Um, um, it's just been like an honor to have her as my mother-in-law. And uh, um, we used to come here like every Sunday to take her to church, pick her up and take her to church. And, and you know, and. Uh, she always had uh, lunch here for us, and, and she was always uh, real busy watering her okay. plants outside, washing clothes. Uh, she was always like busy. a real busy uh -huh. lady, uh -huh. an example for everybody. Yes, I see that, and that's mm -hmm. that's so brilliant. She's uh, led a long and healthy life because of constant, ongoing activity yes, and uh, for others. Yeah, helping others and uh, again just such unbelievable strong values that uh, she has which she's which her family is telling us also and my main goal is to inspire youngsters across the world to see this and it's all simple things but adapted well across uh, many decades can lead to a very long and fruitful life so thank you Ruby for, for telling us that and uh, Priscilla, I mean, like I said, it's so much 
it's so heartwarming to see three generations like this and I'm so proud so thanks for being here and uh, I would love for you to say a few words too well um, as her grandchild um, I think she's been uh, inspiring you know I mean she has uh, I'm a nurse so she sort of inspired me to to do that and um, the other day she actually gave me a pair of her scissors that was very sweet of her so and, and now I'm taking care of her so um, oh so she passed it down as a generational gift to you yeah oh that's so sweet uh -huh. yeah so I'm just proud to be her, her grandchild absolutely absolutely and you are continuing the the family tradition of helping people by being a nurse and uh, mm -hmm. That's, uh, that's wonderful as well. So uh, thank you all. Once again, it's thank my you. honor and pleasure. Thank you, Carmen, so much to, to be with you and spend time with you. And thank, thank you once you. again for having me. Thank you. It's, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kampana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been talking with the Samarano family and especially the very, very interesting stories that Carmen has been telling me. And I understand they've been through several adventures as a family in the deserts of Arizona. And Carmen, I would love for you to tell everybody that apparently y'all were lost in the desert one time. Can you tell us that story? Well, that, uh, when, uh, when we left Marana and we went to Mesa, well, uh, it was a wagon, two horses, mm -hmm. and it was kind of a flip. But they put a, a tent on top of it, and we were having a good time uh -huh. <laughs> playing on the, on the, you know, on the mattress. But uh, but when we got there, it wasn't. My brother almost drowned in the wind, in the, in the, in the big in the canal. Oh my. If it wasn't because people were there and God came out, he would have drowned because I was too small to help him. But, uh, but God saved, saved him. And, uh, and then uh, when, he, when he came back, my grandfather went over there. He had a wagon and he brought us back. But uh, there was no signs. And even the, if there were signs, my father, my grandfather, my father, and my mother, and I was still a child and I hadn't gone to school. So we, none of us knew how to read. Even if so you were a very little girl. girl? I was seven years old. Oh. But I hadn't gone to school yet. And I didn't know any English at all. So, so, so instead of going to El Picacho, which was a lot closer, they went towards Florence and it was a long, longer way because there was a road over there and the other way, I don't think there was a good road. So they, they didn't go there. They went to Florence and when they got there, he asked what place that was and they told him it was Florence and there's a big prison there, but it's a town too. Mm -hmm. So then we went the other way towards Marana again and on the way, halfway there, there was a ranch and they, they help uh, my grandfather to to feed the, the, the horses, mm -hmm. and then they fed us too. We hadn't, you know. What did you? What did? Do you remember we, what you had? Yeah, we didn't uh, have nothing to snacks, nothing. Uh -huh. So so the people there were good enough to feed us. So and then we went to Marana, and my mother and my father, and my grandfather went to pick cotton and they left me in a tent with my sister. She was small. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, a, that's the way we got lost. Oh, wow. <laughs> I guess we slept on the way, I guess, because my father went to a, a restaurant to get some food, but I don't think it was enough for, for my grandfather, my mother, my father, and us children, myself and my two brothers and my sister. Uh -huh. It wasn't enough. Wow. But on the way, these, these people help, help us mm -hmm. with feeding us. 
So lots of interesting family stories. I'm sure I could be here all day listening to uh, all the incredible. And I was seven years old, mm -hmm. and when they came back, my mother says, "Well, she must have been tired," and she says, "You didn't do anything." She says, "I was seven years old. What could I do?" <laughs> so, so then the next day, the next day I was left there again, but I fixed some dough for tortillas. Oh. At seven. oh my goodness. But I, I guess it was good because she made tortillas. Uh -huh. <laughs> and my mother used to, but she was not used to going anywhere from Fort Lowe to Tucson. Just, just here, you know. And over there she was crying when we were in mess. And I says, Mother, why are you crying? She says, I don't think I'm going to see my father anymore. She thought it was way too far to, to come back. <laughs> but my grandfather, he had a wagon and he picked us up and he came. And we came to see my grandfather. Very cool, and <laughs> here you are. <laughs> it's, it's a very uh, frightening thing that, that, that my father used to buy. At that time, there was no cars, hardly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the, he would buy a, they would used to call it carretela. Carretela, it was a, a wagon with one oh, horse. Oh, okay. Four yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. He used to buy that and then sell it and then buy another one and then sell it. Why he did that, I don't know. But he bought well, this. It looks like a great this, business sense. That this he horse that, was, that would just st stand there and would stand there and wouldn't move. Oh. And this, this one used to do that and the, and the train was coming and she she stood right in the red road. She stood and my mother was trying to get her to, to go and she wouldn't go. So so it was about like from that house, house is there and I could see it but I was about four or five years old. And I was holding my brother and, and we were gonna cross the, and then that, 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 that train, uh, Pito, como te dice? Hot. Yeah. Or blew yeah. the horn. Blew the horn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the train, you know, made that uh -huh. noise. Uh -huh. And that's how she came up. She barely came out of the train. Or we would have gotten killed. Oh, the, gosh. Every, the horse. Narrow and escape. Yeah. And then, and then I, I was small, but I got scared. Because I saw the train coming towards me. Of course, my goodness. But then at the evening when my father came home, my mother said, you almost were left without a family today. I remember that, and I was about four years old. So you were pretty blessed to come out of that. I heard my mother tell my father that, you know. So that Samuel is like uh, it was a train coming with there's a horse carriage which got stuck. Mm -hmm. Oh my yes. goodness! Wow, I narrow. Think, I, think I think the the wheels got stuck on the track. And I I didn't yeah. know what would happen, but I got scared. Of course, because oh I goodness. saw the train coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. But it barely got out of the track. Barely got out of the track. Yeah, that that to me, I mean, I know in retrospect, but it's. It sounds like a real cinematic moment, like they show yeah. in the movies, where you yeah, have that one like moment start, where, oh my goodness, real. this was real. And I'm glad that you were able to come out of it, for sure. Oh. And then when we get to the to the ranch where we were going to go, my mother was going to help with something over there. And uh, and I, I my knees were trembling. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, Tell her about the sewing, you're a seamstress. Well, uh, the thing is that I used to crochet and I used to sew. Mm -hmm. Well, I sew my dress. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? You made your dress? That I got married with. Yeah, oh my god, your and wedding you dress? You saw it already. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Wow, you, you did it, you made I it did yourself. A, I've done, I, in my lifetime, I done, had done a lot of sewing. Mm -hmm. And I sewed those curtains. I saw the ones in the kitchen, and a uh, lot of things for my kids and for myself. I used to make quilts for the ones that got married. Oh, that's so sweet! And then later, later on, for the for the for the ones that are being worn, something like this. Oh. But th this I didn't make. She, the one that takes care of me, uh -huh. made this because uh, I showed her how 
I'm sure they treasure that uh, those yeah. presents forever, yes. you know, homemade, yeah. handmade and quilts. I went, I I went to a <laughs> girls' camp, uh -huh. and I and I, it was like a high school to New Mexico, uh -huh. and uh, I knew how to crochet and how to knit. And this la the teacher, she was a teacher. There were a lot of teachers there because there was a hundred girls. Mm -hmm. It was and a CC uh, camp, they used and to call. CC camps. Told, oh. And I used to help the one that, that did them some uh, crochet and things like that. Uh, she There was a little something she didn't know, but she was a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I told her how how to do it, what I knew. And so I helped her out for, with other girls. Mm -hmm. And when we were going to come home after three months, uh, she took me up among the 100 girls. And she came and found me and she says, well, and she says, I wanted to to see you because I wanted to thank you because you for helping me. You helped me a lot. Aww. So that was That's nice very sweet. for her to take the time to do that, you know. Yeah, but you had helped her too, which is wonderful. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I, so I did help her, I guess. I did help. It did, this did help her and the other girls that I did, I used to also tell you know how mm -hmm. to do this. How to build? Oh, in cool. three months I made three sweaters. One for the camp and one for me. Two. Two sweaters. Wow. And one blouse for yeah, one other teacher. Uh -huh. She liked the blouse I had with very pretty thing over here. Yeah. And I says, where did you get that? And I said, I made it. You made it? Can you make me one? Sure. So I mm -hmm. made her one, <laughs> and mm -hmm. she says, we don't have any money here, but here's a, a catalog, you can order whatever you want. So I ordered a dress, because when I went over there, I lost some weight, and I hadn't had time to fix my clothes. So I bought a dress on the catalog, mm -hmm. and she says, don't you want something else too? No, I said, the dress is enough. Oh. Tons of great memories, for sure.